All right, I'm rolling. You rolling? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Hey everybody, this is Big Anklevich here with another episode of That Gets My Goat. With me is... I guess that would make me Rish Outfield. No, that wouldn't make you... I mean, you being Rish Outfield would make you Rish Outfield. Just me tossing to you is, doesn't do any of that. <laughs> We're back with a old school style That Gets My Goat today. We're going to be griping a little bit because I think someone got Rish Outfield's goat recently. What is this thing that got your goat, sir? I don't know that it was recently. Okay, semi-recently. It's something that's bothered me for a little while, but I called you a couple weeks ago while you were driving, while you were a captive audience, and (laughs) I'm sure I complained for an hour about this topic, and then I thought, well, why didn't we record it? Because then three people could hear it besides us. Yeah, but time well spent. We had one of those uh, local comic conventions recently, and I took my nephews to it. And usually in the past, there have been lots and lots of booths where you can buy lots and lots of junk. Uh, in fact, I, you know, that, that has become the primary draw because my nephews don't really want to go to the panels and listen to grown-ups talk. Yeah, those guys are boring. People that they've never heard of take questions. Grown-ups do suck. <laughs> I, I really enjoy the, uh, the panels, but I can see a kid just being like, ah, no. And so, yeah, the kids like to go and, and look at action figures or look at Pokemon cards. Or uh, One year there was a Goodwill booth. <laughs> really? And Goodwill had brought all of the stuff that was super hero-related or Star Wars related or Indiana Jones related, you know, the pop culture related that had been donated. But this year, there was no Goodwill booth and the action figure booths were so few and far between that in about 15 minutes, you could see everything that the four of them or whatever had to offer. And and I was telling you about that and just complaining about, you know, my nephew had been saving up his money to buy stuff at this con and there was nothing. And you said, well, well, what was there then? I don't understand. There, there were still booths. And I said, it was all pop vinyls. It was all the Funko bobbleheads. There, there was this great big booth in the middle that was the size of like five booths put together that had thousands and thousands of these pop vinyls. And yeah, I just talked your ear off for the next hour about how much I don't like pop vinyls. And now I'm going to talk the listener's ear of, of, about it. Is that, is that fair? Because <laughs> Misery is a Stephen King novel from 1987. Okay. I was wondering about that. And it loves company. Right on. Can you inform the listeners just what is it about these pop vinyls that you despise so much? Well, I mean, the ubiquity is part of it. Right. It's like uh, Twilight, you know, you, you, you may have liked it when it first came out. But once it became a thing, now you're just like, no, I hate it like everybody else. Maybe that's a, a good comparison. <laughs> but it's not the main thing. I mean, it's just like, I didn't like Twilight because I felt like it was badly written. But the ubiquity made it worse. And the thing with these pop vinyls is that they're ugly. But they're also everywhere and beloved. And so, yeah, that makes it so much worse. So it's got a lot to do with the fact that you don't like them, but for some reason, everybody else does. And and, and maybe you feel like you're like, what is it that I don't get that all you people think you do get or something? Yeah. And uh, um, there's surely nobody listening that is not aware of what these things are, right? I mean, everybody calls them Funko Pops, but I have called them Pop Vinyls from the dawn of time, and I will continue to call them that. (laughs) I'm Archie Bunker or something. We'll we'll, we'll quickly explain them just in case, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure they've probably seen them, but they may not realize what we're talking about. So they're these little figurine kind of things. Some of them are bobbleheads. Some of them aren't. I, I'm not sure how you know which is which because they all look the same. They're all they all come in the same box, but some of them have little springs under their necks that makes their head bounce, and then others just don't. They they just 
They're little figurines, but they have really big heads and really small bodies. The hands and feet, I think, are still kind of a little bit bigger. They're they're kind of... Uh, they're hydrocephalic. That's the word you're looking for. Okay, yeah. They're supposed to be cutesy. They're supposed to be a childlike v- uh, rendition of your favorite character. My daughter calls this style chibi, which I think is a Japanese uh, anime kind of a thing where they take your characters and they make them cutesy and little. They have generally just black dots for eyes. Although sometimes they have white dots for eyes if they're a different kind of a creature. Not often. I'm trying to think of how many times I've seen white yeah, dots I want to say eyes. like Iron I Man. I would like them more if they had white dots for eyes. Uh, oh, the, okay. Uh, my daughter actually has a couple of these that she's she's bought. And it seems to me like she's... I mean, she's not really into it, but I think she's going to amass a bit of a collection for herself if this keeps up. The first one she ever got was a Venomized Deadpool. And the Venomized Deadpool has white dots for eyes, which makes sense because Deadpool has white eyes, right? Even in the movie, they just gave him the empty white eyes that you would get if he had a mask on in a comic book. So yeah, that one has white eyes, but then she the other one that she has is a Shazam or Shazam. Captain Marvel, and that one just has the black dots for eyes cuz he just has a regular face. But yeah, the, with a regular face you have just black dots. Then with other things, sometimes you don't. Uh, it just depends. And I know that the black dots is one of the things that a lot of people complain about. Just having black dots for eyes, they feel like it's this soulless kind of dead looking, like... uh, They've got the blackest eyes, like a doll's eyes. Yeah, like Coraline has replaced, or Coraline's uh, other mother has replaced their eyes with buttons now. And they're just creepy Oh, that's that's a good comparison. Yeah, there is something about that. But but yeah, it's the combination of it's super cutesy, but it's got soulless, soulless dead eyes. I'm personally not too disturbed by the black dots for eyes. I mean, it's a it's a thing that people have done. Well, but they're so cutesy. If they were more realistic, I think you would be. Though. Yeah, yeah. If they were more realistic, I w- I think I would be. But you know, like they've been doing various. You know, it's it's a style of animation or or cartoon drawing. Uh, like Charlie Brown, for example, just has dots. Just has black dots for eyes. That was always one of my favorite things. There's, uh, I think, her character's name is Marcy who is Peppermint Patty's little, like, assistant or whatever. I think she always calls her Sarge or something like that. But she has glasses on. And I remember one time in one of the uh, holiday specials that they do for Charlie Brown, she takes her glasses off for a second and, like, cleans them off. And when she takes her glasses off, you think that she has big white eyes because she has these big glasses, but she takes them off and it's just the glasses that do that. And all she has is these tiny little black dots for eyes and she wipes her glasses off and then puts them back on and then her eyes are back which i always thought was kind of funny that that was the way it was underneath there but here and there you get cartoons and i and i i used to fancy myself a bit of an artist or a cartoonist and i made up little characters for all of my friends in high school and some of them were that way they just had dots for eyes and then some of them had the big cartoon eyes so I don't hate that style all by itself, but I know lots of people do. Lots of people complain about it that soulless. And there are some, I have to admit. Like I remember you and I were at the store once and we came across the pop vinyls, the Funko Pops that are made of vinyl. They had the Dr. Seuss Funko Pops and they were just hideous they were horribly creepy there was a a cat in the hat one and i think the grinch was the other one that we saw there and there may have been another one but they did not go well with the big black dots for eyes they looked awful like (laughs) you would buy that for a kid and then put it on his that kid's shelf and then the kid would have like horrible dreams 
from that moment on until you finally realized that that was the problem and threw that toy away and then they would go back to normal again. Because, yeah, the, those were just frightening. And they have several other, I, I want to say, they have other... I mean, the, the one thing about Funko Pops, Pop Vinyls, is that they have everything. They went out and got the license to every property ever imaginable. Like, if there's anything that you like, there's a pop vinyl for it. Uh, it might not be easy to find. Is there, like, a online store that has them all? I guess there's always Amazon, but... Well, they, there is a Funko website. Yeah. And whenever I go to the San Diego Comic-Con, there is just a Funko booth that where they have all their exclusives and the line goes all the way down the block Uh, do they have like all the ones available for regular prices because it seems like every time i see one i'm like oh they have one of this and then i look at it and it's like oh it's only 45 dollars yeah i think they would only have whatever is current Mm -hmm. yeah the, the, the it's so lofty whenever like they've stopped making a funko pop they say that that one is retired like it's in the Disney <laughs> vault or something like that. It just, ugh. Every, you mentioned the cat in the hat as like a repugnant character, and he is. But I saw, the, do you remember the Cantina band, the Bith aliens? Okay, I yeah. saw a Funko Pop of those, and that was actually delightful because those actual characters have great big black eyes. Right. And so it looked perfect it it didn't look like a funko pop it looked like an accurate representation of that (laughs) character and uh, i thought that that was neat but like my friend jeff i went to his house his kid graduated from college and i went to his house and they have a gargantuan collection of pop vinyls uh, under a glass case you know, like oh, these gosh. are Fabergé eggs or something like that, <laughs> where they're all just lined up and protected. And I was looking at them and I could only name like a third of the characters because a lot of them are like from franchises or, or animes or, you know, series that they are after my time that, I you know, I'm not in the target audience for that I don't I don't follow and I don't care. You know, it's like, I don't know who Steven Universe is, OK? But there are a ton of pop vinyls for that. But there was one where I was just like, oh my gosh, you've got a Buffy the Vampire Slayer pop. That's so cool. And Jeff's kid said, "Uh, no, that's that's actually Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And it bummed me out because it was like, oh, then then they need to make it better because I can't (laughs) tell who it is. You know what I mean? It's like the, they're so nondescript and not... Re, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where they're just this vague interpretation of so-and-so. Yeah, I, they don't go... I mean, every one of them has kind of the same head shape. And then they just have the same dots for eyes. And they have the same kind of tiny little nose. And they don't have a mouth generally either. And so it's got to come out in like the clothes that they wear or the their hair or s- there's got to be something i mean the character has to be unique enough that it, you can communicate it with its outfit or something you know like if you have one of buffy the vampire slayer well she wore all sorts of different clothes all the time i mean she was in a show and she just wore the clothes that people wore to high school at that time and so did Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So there's really not much of a difference once you narrow it down to all that. You know, yeah, if it's Snake Eyes, that's a pretty obvious thing. Or if it's Voltron, that's a pretty obvious thing. Well, but they can't do the big black eyes for Snake Eyes, right? They have to do goggles. No, no, yeah. It's covered. Yeah, his eyes are covered. And that lessens the, I don't know, uniformity, the... Uh, like... He had a Malcolm Reynolds, right? Uh He's in his brown coat and he's got a pistol. Although I was just like, gosh, that doesn't look like Mal's gun. And it turned out it was young Han Solo from the Solo movie. But they look identical, dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's no difference at the Funko level (laughs) between young Han Solo and Malcolm Reynolds. Well, to be fair, Firefly is just Han Solo the TV show. 
uh, I'm pretty sure that was the concept that they started with when they started creating that show. So there is a little crossover. But yeah, you should be able to tell the difference. And I guess since we're we're talking this, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that I do own a couple of pop vinyls myself. I never wanted to be the person who had a bunch of them. I always figured I would just get one and one alone and this would be the representation of that thing on my shelves. That sounds like a good plan. And I, and I couldn't decide what, you know, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to get one. What character do you pick when you can pick from any damned thing in the world, you know? Because Funko, they've made everything. And so now you've got infinite number of choices, basically, and you're going to pick one. What is it that I would pick? And I, I couldn't decide. I remember when Rogue One came out. We saw the Rogue One figures, and they had one of Darth Vader there. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll get Darth Vader. That's probably a good one if I'm going to pick one. But I never did. And then my wife took the choice out of my hands and gave me one for Christmas. Unfortunately, it was a, for a character that I would never have picked myself. I think she just was on Amazon.com. She was buying other stuff, and they had this is like one of those. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen they do an one add-on. of those add-ons. You can't yeah, buy it where, yourself, but you can right, add it to your you cart, and it's dirt cheap, right? Yeah, you, it's super cheap if you add it on. And so she uh, saw it and added it on. It was the. Daredevil from the Daredevil Netflix show when he uh, would go out in in black and like have the, I don't know what you'd call it, the bandana tied over his eyes. So in that case, you didn't have to deal with the the creepy black eyes. So I guess there's an advantage to that. But I, I don't know. I mean, I liked Daredevil, the TV show, fine and all, but it's not something that I liked so much that I wanted to have the pop vinyl of okay but if you bought a daredevil pop vinyl would it have been the black costume (laughs) no it probably would have been the one with the costume and i'm sure if i really was buying a dare i probably would have got a comic version of daredevil is what i would have gone for but if i was getting one from the show i would have got the you know him from the end of the show when he gets his suit so you know it was it was all right and all but it, it wasn't anything that I wanted to keep, to tell you the truth. And I did put it on my shelf, and I had it up there for a while. But I eventually took it down, and I just keep it in my little toy box. And sooner or later, I'm sure I'll sell it. And it'll probably fetch $6 instead of the $3 that we paid for it. So it'll be totally, it'll be worthwhile. But I did eventually stumble upon the one pop vinyl. And that's not true, because it turned out to actually be two pop vinyls. <laughs> That I would buy. One day I went into a Walgreens and I was looking at other stuff. Star Wars guys and super, you know Marvel superhero guys. And that's what I was actually looking for. But then down at the bottom they had their pop vinyls. And I saw it and I went, oh my gosh. I think this is the one. These are the ones that I will buy. They had Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes right there on the shelf. And I thought, okay... I guess I've found the ones that I will get. I was willing to buy Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes because that's something that I loved enough. And, uh, you know, I happened upon it. I didn't have to go searching on the Funko website or wait in line at the convention or whatever. They were just right there. Regular price. So those are the two that I have since I mentioned Snake Eyes already. Yeah, it's the visor Snake Eyes where he's got like the night visor kind of a thing. And then uh, the the regular outfit of Storm Shadow. They don't come with like swords or weapons, right? No, they do. Yeah, Storm Shadow's got two swords in his hands. Oh, oh cool. And and uh, Snake Eyes, let me turn my head and look over there. Yeah, Snake Eyes has a sword in one hand and an Uzi in the other. You can't take them out of their hands. They don't like come with them. They're just part of the figure. But yeah, they're pretty cool. I truthfully think I I chose well. Storm Shadow does have the black eyes that we were uh, complaining about, but I don't think they look bad. Maybe because the rest of his face is in a mask or something. I don't know. It just it's not as upsetting as say the Cat in the Hat figure or the Grinch figure were, because those were frightening. Do you own any pop vinyls? Considering that you hate them so much, do you actually have one that's yours? 
Well, I, I was just about to call you a big overflowing bucket of crap <laughs> for having pop vinyls. But yeah, I, I actually have one. I don't display it. It's in a drawer. But you and I have discussed this often that I aspired, I tried to be the world's biggest fan of Bosque. <laughs> Even going so far as to buying a Bosque mask and gloves that still sit unused because you have to be tall to pull that off. And you also, you have to have a head the size of a proportional pop vinyl to, <laughs> because he's got this great big lizard head. Uh-huh. Is the mask pretty large? Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember I wanted to I think, borrow that mask and, and gloves from yeah, you. Yeah, you wanted to use it for a video one time, and we never did. Yeah, to use for a video. You chose to move away instead. Yeah. All sucks. the fun we would have had. But, yeah, I, I've got that Bosque one, and it does me no good. Like I said, it's in a drawer. But it was during that time when it's just like, well, what do I love that much? And uh, eventually that aspiration fled me you know I, I just there's nothing that i love more than anybody else in the world <laughs> do you know what i mean it's just like I've, I've had this conversation with you and with other people and it's just like what are you the best there is at and for me it's just like there's nothing there's always going to be a better audiobook narrator there's always going to be a better podcaster there's a funnier person you know in every group of people than me there's conceivably somebody that strikes out with girls better than I do. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just I, eventually I had to grow up and say, no, there are people that love Bosk more than I do. <laughs> well, you should have moved on to Reese because I don't think anybody likes Reese most of all. So if you picked like you just got to pick something really, really obscure. Did you have a Reese as a kid? Um... If you have to, um, then no, you didn't. I don't think I did. I had a squid head. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to remind you of something. Your parents had 10 kids. <laughs> oh. So by God, you remember every Star Wars guy that you had because you had three. <laughs> Wasn't quite that bad. But yes, I didn't, I didn't have the biggest collection for sure. I used to go over to this one kid's house just... He was way younger than me, but he had the most Star Wars guys ever, and I would go over to his house to play with him just because of that. That's what uh, that's what a douche I was. You've told this story so many times, where you basically pretended to be this kid's friend because he had lots <laughs> of cool toys, and then you'd walk away and just be like, I'm better than him. <laughs> <laughs> Three days later, there's a knock at the door. Hey, can you play? Can we play with your electric trains today? Afterwards, you're like, I'm better than him. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, uh, it's a greatest hits episode. I had to remind people of the, the way that that story ended. Yeah. But, uh, he had Reese, is what you're about to say. Right, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, if, if you picked Reese, I bet, uh, but you could be the world's biggest fan of Reese. I kind of would like to be. It's just, it would be neat. Or like Wee Quay. Okay, well, Weequay is a species, so uh, that's going to be awful difficult. He was a just a figure when I was a kid. <laughs> and there was the other guy who had a name, too. What was the other one? Didn't they make a figure of a second Weequay guy and name him, like, Beequay or something, like they did with Beto and Greedo? <laughs> Here it is 40 years later, they've never made a Beto figure. Sadly. Oh. So, so there, there, there is still room... To expand the, uh, the Star Wars. They did. They just, you, 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 he was called Greedo, and you just said, no, this one's Beto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, but, but yeah, you didn't answer my question before. You know what Reese had? What? He had shiny, round, black eyes. Oh, yeah, he would be perfect. Did they make a Reese uh, Funko Pop? They did. It was a Walmart exclusive. It's not that expensive. So if somebody wants to buy that for me, I will pretend to become the most, what, what is it? The, the biggest, the biggest devotee Reese of Reese. Biggest fan ever. Yeah, this Reese uh, Funko Pop isn't that bad looking, actually. No, it looks good. It, it lends itself to the Funkoization because it's got a great big head and a small body, right? <laughs> All right. 
and those black, black, dead, soulless eyes. Okay, you know what? I have to admit that I actually have one more Funko Pop that I'd forgotten. No! Dude, I was liking you. I'd forgotten about this, but I... In the last several years, I've developed a weird obsession for Hulkbuster. I just loved the Hulkbuster that was in Age of Ultron. And I got myself a a Hulkbuster figure here and there. And then I started getting more and more of them. And I've got, I don't know, five or six or ten of them. Or I don't know how many I've got. But every time I'd find something like that on clearance, I would get it. Like they had, what were those stupid, they they went to some kind of a video game. Oh, Playmation, Disney Play, or yeah, is yeah. that what it was called? I think that was it. They had a, a this Playmation thing where you get figures and they had Marvel stuff. And I got the, the Hulkbuster of that when it was cheap. And I got the Disney Infinity one when it went cheap. Titan Heroes ones when they were cheap, etc., etc. So now I've got a bunch of different Hulkbusters. And uh, not too long ago, I saw that the Funko Pop vinyl of the Hulkbuster was going for cheap on Amazon. I thought, you know what? I gotta add this to my collection, I guess. So I also have the Hulkbuster Pop vinyl. But that's an oversized one, right? It's it's much yeah, bigger it is. than regular. It's, it is big. And it has white eyes, not black ones. Hmm. Does the actual Hulkbuster have white eyes? I guess it does. Yeah, I think so. Or, I mean, it's supposed to have, like, light-up eyes. If you get the really fancy one, it's got light-up oh, eyes. Oh, but... neither of us have the really fancy one, do we? No. But, but you a can bunch paint of... one of the cheap ones to look fancy. Yeah, I've got, I, I actually did a whole video, if you want to go and watch that, on my Big Anklevich on Toys YouTube channel about how I repainted a Hulkbuster. Watch that instead of listening to this. <laughs> Took a really cheap, crappy uh, toy and made it look. I think I think I did a good job. I think it came out looking pretty cool. But yeah, it's a big one. And the other thing that's weird about it is it doesn't have that big of a head. Its head is almost proportional to its body. It's only slightly bigger than it should be. But yeah, I guess there, my last confession. Those are all the pop vinyl figures that I have. And probably all that I will ever have. There's a Darth Vader pop vinyl Uh from the end of Return of the Jedi when the Emperor is shooting him with his lightning. Okay. And you can see Vader's skeleton glow in the dark. Nice. Oh, see, I was hoping you'd be like, oh, well, Hulkbuster is not the last pop vinyl I'm going to get. (laughs) Yeah, looks like I've got to get another one. Darn it. Looks like there's a one of Darth Vader where he's holding a candy cane. Instead of a lightsaber? Yeah. That's cute. You like to decorate for the holidays, so maybe buy that. Oh, crap. No. No, no. I can't get more of them. It's a sickness if you let... See, that was one of the things that I was afraid of. Because there are so many of them and people collect them like crazy, once you get one, it's like you've opened the door. Once you pop... You can't stop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> They've already got a built-in slogan. They just got to convince Frito-Lay. Does Frito-Lay make Pringles? Yes. For just the gotta... sake of ending this episode, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just got to convince Pringles to let him go. But yeah, it's like a, it's a sickness. If you, if you let it in, then you're just going to be like, well, I already have one. I might as well get two. Oh, well, I have two. So, I mean, that's what happened to me with Pez dispensers. I had this idea that I would just get a few of them. And the next thing you know, I had like more than a hundred of them. And I'm like, this must stop. Either I kill myself now or I somehow stop buying these. (laughs) Luckily for me, there are less Pez dispensers than there are Funko Pops. Because basically I ran out of anything more to buy. There are Funko Pop pez dispensers now yeah that's true and that's something that i have skipped i remember you sent me a picture of them the other day and you're like sorry to do this to you but have you seen these and i was just like i've seen them and i deny their existence (laughs) i don't know your pez dispenser thing i mean it was short-lived but it was a sickness yeah every day you would text me and let me know which new Pez dispensers you had gotten. And I was just like, dude, these aren't free. 
how is he <laughs> where where is he getting you know yeah it was a sickness i did i did, i got way too much and the good thing is that i ran out of anything i would have had to start collecting like hello kitty pez dispensers and my little pony pez dispensers and stuff and you know i'd basically reached the limit of properties that i was willing to buy and i'm like okay well i guess i'm done and there have been a few new ones that have come since that time and i have gotten like one or two i think i got the black panther one that came out a little while ago and the ant-man one that i saw but i haven't really gotten much else so that's probably good. I mean, I don't have any place to put them anyways. So what am I going to do with them? So it's best to let them go. Well, but what about your wall of voodoo, man? Yeah, I've got to get that constructed. And that will probably be one third Pez dispensers. Unfortunately, I've got just too many of them. It'll be one third Hulk busters and one third Pez dispensers. And then whatever else is left. <laughs> For a little while, I actually sold... Pop finals. Uh huh. It was something that I tried because I uh, I was always hearing people say that they could never find the Teen Titans pop vinyls, and I was just like, "What well, Toys R Us has like a bunch of them? That's weird that people are." And so I looked them up, and I think Toys R Us had the exclusive for the Teen Titans, or or there were some that were exclusive to Toys R Us, and so I scooped them up and I started to sell them and. Uh, selling things can be just like collecting things where you become addicted to it and you feel like, oh, I've got to. I've got to get this one. I've got to get, oh, I've never seen that one before. i got to get that. Walgreens started having their own little exclusive Funko Pops. I remember there was one of the trash compactor from Star Wars, you know, where Mm -hmm. uh, Han and, and Luke are both in their Stormtrooper guises and there's you know uh, it was a two-pack and there's a little trash stand for them to be put on and and i think that it had a remember there was the big pipe or whatever that he was trying to uh, stretch across right yeah anyway i i was buying that and the uh the the manager of walgreens was at the register with a brand new employee a teenage girl straight out of high school or something like that and the manager was like overseeing this trainee's first day, let's say. And, and the girl was like, did you find everything that you were uh, looking for? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get this. And she looked at it and she's like, oh, what is that? And the manager leaned over and she said, oh, it's this stupid fad <laughs> where these people are all by. She's like, do you remember Beanie Babies? And the girl goes, no. And she's like, it's the same thing as the Beanie Babies. And all these people think that these are going to be worth something. And dude, I was fudging floored <laughs> that a, a manager of a store would say this in front of a customer. Because, dude, you don't do that. You don't criticize what somebody is buying. Yeah, um, you that's at least a, wait until they walk out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wait until... But that's a sure way to guarantee that they never come in again or that you lose that sale and they never come in again. It's just, it was shocking, but it was also like a, a, a glass full of ice water in the face where it was just like, you know what? These are, these are stupid. I'm not going to buy these anymore. And uh, the sad thing is I still have that damn garbage compactor two pack. I never put it up for sale because I was just <laughs> Those words haunt me to this day too of her saying, do you remember the Beanie Babies craze? This is just like that. Because, dude, I had no respect for the people that hoarded the Beanie Babies and had to have every single one. And it's like, no, my grandkids are going to be able to buy a house with these someday. And I was like, but they're stupid. <laughs> but, but, you know, Beanie Babies are works of art compared to pop vinyls. So I, I don't hold them in as much contempt well i hold them in contempt in, in their thoughts that these would be worth something that was the whole scam of beanie babies is these are going to raise in value don't buy them because you like them buy them because it's felt gold <laughs> and yeah i don't know a lot of people that buy pop vinyls because they think they'll be able to retire on them someday and maybe those are the a-holes that i've dealt with that are like there was a band 
on this Toys R exclusive glow in the dark Teen Titans Raven. And you didn't say that there was a band on the corner. And so I want my money back. Ooh, it feels like a Tales of eBay horror in the making. Yeah, I think we veered off topic slightly here or something. But I didn't realize that that's what the deal was, that the, the sickness that infected Star Wars collecting and has gone on to a few other kinds of collecting also affects pop vinyls. Do you despise the other like kind of similar figures that they're like for example there's dorbs i think they're called where they have dorbs are just pop vinyls dude they're right they have smaller. great big heads but they they like have their eyes closed and, they, and their bodies are even smaller or i think funko does something called rock candy yeah you were the one you were super into these rock candy things and i'm sorry <laughs> that i'm telling tales out of school but you wanted like the anatomically correct these are for grown-ups. Pop <laughs> vinyl after dark. Rock candy. You can look up her skirt. <laughs> you wanted that line of toys. And yeah, you would just like shake when you described them to me. And I'd be like, oh my gosh. What the f- I thought I knew you. <laughs> and you're like, well, it's not like it's a blow-up doll or anything. It's like, no, I could respect you if it was a blow-up doll. Sorry, no, I have no idea what you're talking about with the, uh, the, the rock candy <laughs> things. But do you despise those because they have big heads and big eyes and little... I guess the rock candy ones don't have just straight black eyes. And I think the Dorbs have like closed eyes, like they're, they're winking or blinking or whatever, or smiling big <laughs> or something to try and be cute. First of all, F Dorbs, okay? <laughs> F Dorbs and anybody that likes Dorbs because they're like small pop vinyls, but without the charm, okay? Yeah, their heads are like football shaped too, so they're... But secondly, they're even... oh, and see, yeah, another reason for me to hate them. But the things that you are like sexually into, the, the rock candy <laughs> ones, there's nothing wrong with those. They, those aren't ugly like the pop vinyls are. If somebody collected those and got you know aroused by those as you did i can't judge them that's fine i get aroused by those videos where the japanese schoolgirls cover their mouths when they laugh so you know it's just like whatever floats your boat different strokes to to, to rule the, move what is the it world? different strokes it takes different strokes it takes different strokes rule the world yes it does it takes perhaps i've said too much yeah maybe Maybe a little bit. You know the thing uh, that I dislike the most about the pop vinyl thing is all the people that just keep them in the boxes. They just have <laughs> stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of boxes of these things. But I don't know. I mean, I guess there's different styles of toy collecting i assume the people that keep them in the boxes are people that expect that they're going to sell them for a profit someday and they probably will they'll probably sell it for a dollar or two more than they paid for it in the first place but they're not going to sell it for a large profit let them die i just don't get it like if you get something that you think is cool why would you keep it in a box there are people that actually like really get off on the boxes and just like this box is a really cool box i love the style of packaging they have for this thing and i'm just like yeah it's gonna look great in my recycle bin <laughs> you and i are birds of a feather on that dude because every year there are san diego comic-con exclusives where you're paying twenty dollars for the box and i've always been like dude it would only be $80 if, you, if it weren't in that box. Or you could include a whole other figure for the $20 that they spent in the box that has Velcro on it and a window in it. It's just like, oh, geez. But I, dude, I've never been one of those keep it mint on card peoples. And, you know, you cannot open it or I have to buy one to keep. And then the other one I can play with. I, w I went several rounds with a roommate about that, who's like, that's the way to collect Star Wars. And I mean, you and I are on the same page. I got the value out of those Star Wars action figures as a child because I played with them and because I loved them. And I don't care 
that they would have gone for X if I hadn't opened them and hadn't had the fun that I did with them. And so this incessant, you know, it has to be perfect. And is it MOC? No, it's, it's not. It's never MOC. That, that, that's something that I will write on my eBay auctions. It's not MOC. It's never MOC. And MOC is this idiotic industry term for collectors where they say mint on card or slightly less irritatingly M-I-S-B. Is that right? I've heard M-I-B. What is the S stand for? Mint inside box. Oh, inside, huh? Oh, gosh, I just don't. I, those are the people that want to resell it or whatever. And, and good for them, but they're the most anal and they take the most joy out of collecting and reselling and, and finding treasures and all that. You know, I just, I, oh, gosh. I've had so many bad experiences with those people where it's just like, there's a little bent corner on this Darth Vader card. And so I want my money back or I want a great deal of my money back so I don't give you negative feedback. I, I, I ought to do a show where I rant about this kind of crap. Yeah, you ought to make a thing out of it. Because it's made me hate Star Wars collectors. Yeah. Anybody that, that you know wants it to play with it or to pose it or to do stop motion videos with, or to put it in their fish tank, or to blow up with M80s, I can support. But, the, oh, and you've seen, right, the plastic Funko box protectors that you can <laughs> buy to put your box inside so that it will stay perfect forever. Right? Yeah, that, I think that's a little crazy. The A box protector... But yeah, I don't, I just don't get it. Like people have like nice shelves in like, you know, their room or whatever. They'll make this nice shelf and then they just put a bunch of things inside boxes on it. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. I guess my girlfriend's mom was a doll collector when I was in high school. For the most part, she just had dolls out and displayed. But then she also collected the Barbie, the holiday Barbies. And for some reason, those... She didn't take out of the box because you weren't supposed to take them out of the box. Because, I don't know, that ruined it or something. And so she just kept those in the box. And she had them up on the shelves in the box. She's like, why would you do that? I don't understand. I saw a thing the other day where they were doing a whole video about how to display your Funko Pops. And they had... They, they had a bunch of different stuff. One of the things was getting a... I guess at, like, Michael's Craft Store, they have a a bat like a baseball bat display case so like if you got a baseball bat and then had i don't know hank aaron sign it for you or something like that that's funny i was gonna say hank aaron too is he the only baseball player that the two of us know (laughs) possibly you put it up on you know you'd put it inside this case and stick it up on the wall but apparently it's the perfect size for funko pop boxes so this guy would get those and he would stick his favorite Funko Pops in there and put it on his shelf like that and I just thought that's but they're they're still in the box and he would do the same thing too like other shelves like this you know most shelves are about this tall so you could stack two on top of each other to display it that's just something I don't get well what's not to get that's the way God meant Funko Pops to be displayed could be true like great art but do you want to spend the rest of your life on a shelf gathering dust? <laughs> Take that space toy. Children destroy toys. Anyways, I don't know. That's that's pretty much my last gripe about Funko Pops. And and yeah, I'm a I'm a hypocrite. I have several of them. 3 that I will keep, one that I will eventually get rid of when I get around to it. Do you think that I would be free if I got rid of my Bosque Funko Pop, that my hypocrisy will no longer dog me like a childhood mistake. I don't think so, because you'll still remember that you actually bought it, so you, you'll have to admit <laughs> that you bought it. No, my wife got me this. It was an <laughs> add-on from Amazon. <laughs> 
But, you know, I'm sure we've offended a lot of people, and that was my goal, ultimately. Good. If you like the Funko Pops and you like not taking them out of the box, then you don't deserve to live. And so uh, I just wanted to leave you with that in case there were any bridges I had not yet burned. Way to go. And uh, next week we will be talking about the Troll Doll, also known as the Good Luck Trolls or Damn Dolls, as they were officially known as. Yeah, damn things. So join us. Join us here each week, my friends. You're sure to get a smile. Oh. Well, I, I, I don't know. A, a legal is telling us that we're not allowed to say that. Oh, yeah, that's say, probably it, true. So, so rephrase, but instead of say sure to get, say th- there is a chance that you will actually get. Join us here each week, my friends, and you may get a smile. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Legal <laughs> is saying we can't say each week. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Because true. we don't do the episode. So legal is saying, join us each two to six weeks. <laughs> and, and, th- and legal is saying what well, we can't say, my friends. Because that implies a relationship with the listener. Oh, hey, gosh, we're ten minutes over, legal is saying, where we should have ended. Yeah, oh, legal is saying that we've both been fired. Damn. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. I've been Big Anglovich. And I've been Funko Rich Outfield. See you next and time. Keep it funky. Play that Funko music, white boy. Oh, hey, that's pretty good. Pop goes the world. This is Graham W. Cox of the law firm Little Cox Johnson & Wang, legal counsel for Doonstief Enterprises. My associates and I have reviewed this program and it was decided that this objectionable filth now passing as entertainment was presented under a Creative Commons 3.0 license, which means it is free of charge to download and listen to, but only the Honorable Bigglesby Dougal Anklevich and the despicable Richelieu Benjamin Outfield are owners of said rubbish. Also, the statements in said podcast were not to be taken seriously, and therefore no litigation should be necessary. Thank you. Goodwill had brought all of the stuff that was super hero related or star wars related or indiana jones related you know or yo gabba gabba related well i i'd like to think that that was not part of it (laughs) just an aside real quick a outtake that you can do they have a commercial for goodwill on uh, tv around here recently and one of the things that is featured prominently somebody is donating this to goodwill is a big groby stuffed animal (laughs) From Yo Gabba Gabba. Every time I see it, I think, oh, I got to snap a picture of that and send it to Rish. <laughs> You've got to, yeah. I haven't seen Yo Gabba Gabba stuff in so long that I've, I, I keep forgetting to post stuff on my Instagram. And at one of these days, I need to just make a post where I say, hey, guys, it's been like two months since I've seen any Yo Gabba Gabba stuff. I'm just going to have to pivot to whatever creepy or funny you know, stuffed animal that I see at, at thrift stores. Otherwise, there's just not going to be anything. <laughs> right. All right, go back to what you're saying. I press the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine.